what are we 38 now it's episode 38 hey welcome yeah good to see you good to yeah. see you guys do you have a dad joke yeah. for us anything exciting i am uh a lot of dad jokes you know i've been kind of letting them come to me as they come all right you know what i'm saying very good well, let's talk a little bit about this. That's what she said. New Riff, Kentucky Straight. <laughs> Speaking of dads. <laughs> urban whiskey. Yeah. I had that um, at a Halloween party. You've had this already? Yeah. Okay. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. You had a, you had a good time with it. And I said, I got to get this for the boys. And uh, I got it for the boys. Did so, you? No, I know no, no history about it. You walked in and just picked it up off the shelf? Yep. All right, I love that. But I no, <clears throat> I did talk to the guy. I well, I did walk in and get off the show because they had other options. Sure, rather rather than that, that's the sour mash. They have okay. a rye single barrel, and then they have a bourbon single barrel. All right, the back of the bottle says our high rye bourbon is bottled in bond without chill filtration, exceeding the world's finest. Uh, nope, not finest, highest quality standard for spirits set forth. In the 1897 Bottled in Bond Act, aged at least four years. New riff. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, I will pour a wee bit of It's a nice bottle, though. It is kind of a nice bottle. It's got a nice color. It has a nice color. It's almost my shade of brown. Ooh. All right. There we go. It's a heavy bottle. It's got some weight to it. Mr. Josh, Hello. how we doing, buddy? How oh, you I'm feeling? Good. I'm you feeling good great. Week? Yeah, you know, right. uneventful. Everything's good. Yep. Okay. How you doing, Josh? Yep. Really Love good. That. Yep. Isaiah, good. what's up, gang? Everybody's feeling good. All right, let's uh, start with top, so our first from. our first topic. It's right. It's here. Cap. 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 We talked about that this was, as the kids as the kids say. Cap. <laughs> you lying? That's cap. It's a cap. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Fire? You want to come up here? I'm going to get into this. Oh, cheers, man. There we go. Cheers, man. Very good. All right. <clears throat> like that first sip? I did. It's very nice. Mm-hmm. It's a very nice first sip. Mm-hmm. It's very warm. It's very tasty. It's as good. All I like right. this. I like this. Thought you would, my mm. boy. Slide Let's go. Down. All right. First piece of news, Josh. Let's dive right into this. Yeah, news we got Dodgeball up. 2. Dodgeball <laughs> 2. I enjoyed that this came back up. That is one of those movies that yes. I feel like doesn't really need new life, but here we are talking about it. Um, Justin Long uh, recently said in an interview that apparently it's in discussion. It's mm-hmm. floating around. Uh, and I thought it'd be a fun thing to talk about a little bit, not necessarily – whether or not we felt like Dodgeball 2 needed a sequel, but we'll certainly that get whole, into that. Um, but the rebooting of a lot of things right now, a lot of comedies. We talked about White Chicks 2 <clears> last yeah, week. Yeah. Is there a comedy uh, you would like to see rebooted? But first, let's 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 uh, let's touch on Dodgeball 2. Did you like Dodgeball? Were you if you can dodge a wrench, you can, you can dodge, dodge a ball. ball. Yeah, it's it's like, right. it's it seems good. like it answers itself, guys. Yeah. Absolutely love it's it. It's a good movie. I think um, it's just one of those just – it's just, it's just a classic, man. Yeah, you can't. If it comes on, you can just leave it on. Like you don't gotta pull it up to stream it. If you're just like browsing and you see it, you can just let it fly. If the boys are over, yeah. like if you had it on when we walked in, I'd probably would have sat and watched the whole. Yeah, thing. that's one of those. I feel like that that era of comedy yes. and that movie like style. I feel like that was one of the last ones that kind of got in under you know kind of the modern, yeah. super bad, all that, like the new age yeah, comedy yeah, yeah, that kind of yeah. set in mid 2000s, right? Yeah. I feel like that really, what when what year did that come out, Josh? Let's find out. But I feel like that was a- uh, Ben Stiller was on a fucking roll though yeah, too, bro. That was when he was really dialed in. Vince yeah. Vaughn too, 2004? Yeah. yeah. yeah right, Him, uh, Anchorman, which you, you asked the question, yep. I would like an Anchorman 3. Um, wow. Like, him, Don't Ben Stiller, Ben Stiller, uh, Will Ferrell. Uh, who's the other guy? It was in the uh, was it the Animal? Is that what it was called? Um, um, what are you going for? Sorry, is there a movie called The Animal? I think there is. Uh, there is two thousand one. Yep. Yep. John C. McGinley. 
Uh, who else? Rob Schneider. Rob, Rob Schneider. Schneider. That's who I was looking yeah. for. Yeah. That's the boy. Right yeah. there. The animal. Yeah. Yes. He had, yes. That was an age of, yeah. that was kind of like the mm-hmm. last era of the Adam Sandler, Chris Farley, like yeah, those guys. All those guys, That was man. kind of the last era of that. that. So good. And was he in, uh, was he in Dodgeball? Rob Schneider. Was, who is, were there any classic comedians in that other yeah. than? Oh, that was other than Vince. Vaughn. I mean, Vince Vaughn was kind of a Vince, new era Vince, guy. Vince was in it. Was there a classic holdover? We get like a um, Buscemi in there or anything? Mm, he always slides somebody nah. in. There and I can't. Gary Cole, Jason, ba- Jason Bateman. <laughs> yeah, I thought maybe Troy Cotton with with that blindfold on, he will not be able to see very well. <laughs> <laughs> I thought one of like the uh, extra characters might have been somebody. Uh, it might be uh, Lance Armstrong made a cameo. David Hasselhoff and Chuck mm-hmm. Norris. Also. Wow. <laughs> Quite a list. All right. So we all enjoyed that. We're all up for a round two, it seems like. Absolutely. Right? Very yeah. Good. Give, like, and I don't need to give it to me straight to fucking streaming. Like, let me let me pack a bowl. You're and, not going to the theater, dude. No, not for that. Yeah, it's going. But oh, I, want I thought it. I thought you were saying let me go to the theater for this. Like, no, 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 no. I need this straight to straight to the straight box. Straight to streaming. And uh let me get a nice glass. Straight to streaming. And, and a bowl and and uh there you go. Yeah, All right. Man. Laugh my ass off for what, an hour and a uh, half. What else, comedy wise, like, what? What? Give me a give me a sequel that you want that you've not gotten yet. I would. You said mind, Anchorman three. Yeah, Anchorman three. Maybe we can revisit Tropic Thunder. I would love to see them guy. Those guys kind of see if they can like re. Yeah, we're getting that, a, we're know? getting a follow up with uh, what's his face, Lex Gross, uh, Grossman. Was that was his first name? Lee Grossman. Lee. Maybe I don't know offhand. The I'm, Tom Cruise character. We are. Yeah, yeah. we did. Yeah, 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 that's right. They're working on a a standalone for that for character. I don't know if Tropic Thunder ever gets a sequel. It would be. I like a spinoff. Awesome, I don't need a sequel, but, but maybe to stay in that yeah, universe. I yeah, I feel like the time maybe has come and gone for that. It'd be really hard to. Yeah. I think hit all of those marks again. Although you'd love to see it. I wouldn't mind a uh, another installation in the Meet the Parents, Meet the Fockers. You got three of those, but maybe it's a now number though he is you old want enough. To reboot it. Maybe he's old enough now to be the grandfather now. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, it's kind of inverse to who he was. Yep. In the in the in the uh, yep. in the first one, he can now do the tropes that Robert De Niro was. I get you. I cool. get you. Yeah, yeah, he is getting up there. Yeah. That's a good point. All right, I like that. You? I would have gone Step Brothers too. Maybe. Oh yeah. Oh, I feel like that's kind of ripe for it. Although I do think that John C. Riley, I think they're a little too old now. I think yeah. Will Ferrell, I think they've not that they've aged out. It's just it they're could just be older. hard to see them yeah. come back and do that. But who knows? You know, I sure. think I, I think the 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 golden nugget in that in that film was the fact that they were old. And I, I if any if two, if any two people can kind of play to the trope of being extremely immature yeah but still having to be grown men that's true that's would fair. be them I, I i think they can do it but you're right they they may have age i don't know i don't really know how that would work but yeah. i th- i think they can do it no i think we made josh watch step brothers yes did you watch that it that's right? correct yeah, josh yeah. had never weeks, seen it a few months and ago this yeah. was like very recently we made yeah. him watch it i think f- it might have gone over his head like i don't know if he no, How I, did it I, work for you? Uh, I don't. It's one of those movies that I'm not sure if it's like a right time and place thing because I saw it when I was younger and yeah. it just hit me like it stuck with me. So like now I know all of it to hold my heart and I yeah, love every right. moment. It it might have been that. I mean, it was a funny movie generally, but you're a much bigger fan of it than I am. Yeah, having seen it, like the moments you know? that I was like so stoked for, yeah, he, I felt like wasn't as excited. When and he that puts me his out. fucking nuts on the fucking <laughs> drum set. Drum set. <laughs> And they show the nuts. Yes. Like. <laughs> and it's obviously like the fakest nuts fakest. ever. Yo, it's just like that type of like, that God. type of humor, man. Yes. It's like it's the fucking Catalina wine. Like, the just Catalina all of, wine like, mixer. I quote, there's probably no movie that I quote more, more. than Step Brothers. <laughs> the Office, I probably quote. A yeah, fair Office amount, is great. But yeah. Step Brothers gets a lot of quotes. You know, another Catalina. movie that might not. That that might be kind of one of those things, kind of like you're talking about, where maybe yeah. it just hits me at a different age. Yeah, 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 I feel like is maybe old school. 
Like okay. old school, oh, similar era. That was my introduction but into Very like funny. Old I did like old yeah, school. Yeah, I love old school. Yeah, Ooh. old school's great. It's yeah, great. Yeah. That, was, that was like early. That, that was, was early. That was earlier. For them. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. broke the glass. And that's what right. like yeah. kicked into like, right. that's what kicked off their era of comedy, I feel like, was kind of old school was really oh my gosh. easing into it a little bit. What was the old but, man that died? Blue. 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 Yeah, blue. Yeah, blue. Blue. Uh, and blue. they pour he didn't he pour out a little liquor for blue but at one point in the, <laughs> he did. Oh my god. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, like oh man, what was a uh, road trip? That road, was maybe because oh. yeah. Will Ferrell wasn't Will Ferrell in Road Trip? Was he in Road Trip for a minute? I, I, no, uh, Tom Green. Tom Green was Tom in Green. That Tom Green was, was in Road Trip. And that was, was a short lived era of comedy. I feel like Tom Green's comedy. I feel like everybody yeah. that was in Road Trip kind of was an outlier in the comedy scene. Wasn't Tom, Tom Green? Green was somewhat notable, but he he, he kind of had a weird you know little run there. Wasn't Tara Reid the the lead? No, was, it was. No. Um, Amy Smart. Oh, okay. Yeah, a blonde, though, right? No, Mm-mm. no. Road Trip was a lot of I'm, like. Am I thinking Euro unexpected trip? people? You uh, maybe because Euro Trip was like the quasi sequel. Sure. Because I can't remember. They were both hilarious, though. Yeah, Tom. All right. So those are my answers. That's forty year old virgin. Maybe now. we can revisit that universe. Maybe he's forty year old something now, like not the virgin anymore. But maybe, maybe yeah, yeah, fifty year old. Whatever, but he couldn't really reprise the role, which is probably yeah. what makes it not as fun. He could, you could do another forty-year-old virgin with other younger, com- like yeah. actors, like mm-hmm. you know, you could pull some some other SNL people, maybe. And I yeah. don't know. are you an SNL guy? No, not really. But I feel like a lot of those. I feel like SNL is kind of what you know. Oh, burst all of those burst people, all yeah. of those people for the most part. Um, God, what's his face? Uh, the what's what? It's slipping my mind. The Taco Bell guy. He's been doing dated Kim Kardashian for a while. Pete Davidson. Pete, Pete Davidson. Davidson. Yeah, yeah, like he could do a forty year old virgin, right? Like He's, you could get you could get yeah. those characters yeah. maybe and do something. Yeah, like you know. Yeah, bring I'm it surprised back he hasn't sense, really but, done anything with like Seth Rogen. Yeah. Um, and then is, you you could have. Steve Carell like having a, like be a making an appearance yeah maybe he's like be walking like the dog somebody, or something yeah, yeah somebody yeah, in the movie yeah. but I think you yeah. gotta move on from those characters all right anyway next piece of news we spent a lot of time on that let's move on love that stuff where are we going now all right we're going to Henry Cavill oh, oh this fucking guy is yeah. just Henry this is a is domino it Henry Cavill effect. or Cavill what are we saying? Cavill? I say Cavill. Cavill. I, Cavill I feel like I've heard Cavill, Cavill. all right we're going Cavill all right Henry Henry doesn't roll off the tongue as well. He Henry doesn't have a real. Cavill, first of all, is bailing on The Witcher. Season three is his last one. For those that don't know the news, uh, he's going to be moving on. Season four. Yeah. Liam Hemsworth, the Hemsworth brother, Thor's from brother. Yeah. Uh, oh God. I don't Hunger know. Games. Yeah, Hunger Games. Hunger Games is his yeah. last, I think, big appearance. But uh, he'll be replacing him as Geralt. Yeah. Um. I don't. Is he is he as jacked as Henry Cavill? They seem like they're different in stature, but I I, I don't know. Somebody might. He, he also wears like he that could armor maybe get shit. jacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Henry Cavill Cavill is definitely a bigger guy. <laughs> I'm gonna mispronounce his name I, this whole time. I actually time. looked it up. It is Cavill. Cavill. It's Cavill. All right. It's I'm gonna Cavill. say Cavill and Cavill probably a lot, but Henry. We'll call him that. Henry. Henry. Uh, cool. Henry definitely cool. Can looks we call like him a Hank? bigger dude. <laughs> If you look at Liam in Hunger Games, he looks like a smaller guy for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah. But you can definitely, and that was like 10 years ago, he can certainly bulk up. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't think The Witcher is like a franchise that would suffer if you replaced Henry Cavill. You know what I mean? The fan base is very upset. Really? A lot of people would disagree with you. Most people, there was a lot of like calls on Reddit to just cancel the show altogether. I do think it was a jerk move for Henry Cavill to just quit. So apparently there's kind of two different, uh, there's two leading conspiracy theories behind this. One being obviously that he's returning to Superman. Oh yeah, those DC checks cashed. And the DC checks cashed. So now he's out, he's leaving Netflix and he's moving on to DC. That's one. The second one is that he is a, uh, he is a big fan of the books. Of The Witcher. Yeah. So he's a fan of The Witcher. This is well documented. Yes. He is a large reason why The Witcher even got off the ground. Oh, yeah. He's he's a nerd. Because he's like one of us. When Netflix was like thinking about it, he was like, I'll do whatever to make it happen. Like, I'll be it. Like, I'll be your character. Because he's a big name. And he offered, like, he really wanted to get it off the ground. So he made it happen. 
And so a lot of people are saying that he is very unhappy with how the show is being written because it's very counter to the books mm. and it's not in keeping with what the books would, you know, be having them do or whatever. Anyway, it's just a separation between the deviation of concepts. So he's very upset about that and he's basically just like, all right, I'm tired of fighting for, you know, creative Yeah, input. for creative yeah. input. I'm going to bail and – I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to pass it off to somebody else. His, I think part of him not coming back as Superman was the same thing. He said he didn't want to play a sad and mopey Superman. He wants to play a, a an upbeat, hopeful Superman. And well, that was part of The Rock's selling point of getting him back to... I'm not sure that they should give The Rock so much, like... We'll get there. I don't I'll know, if, I don't know I got, if they should give him so much, like, you know... Juice? What's the word? What am I looking for? So much control, so much like responsibility. Why? So much figureheadism. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. How I don't, did he like, why did he come in all of a sudden and kind of just like spearhead the DC film universe? I guess you got to keep the lights on. And if somebody's excited with star power like The Rock and saying, yo, let me do this. Yeah. This is going to reinvigorate, uh, you know, our studio and what have you. Mm -hmm. And you don't really got to do anything. You're just going to let him like produce it and he's going to bring it back to the table. Yeah, but he's doing more than that. He's in it. He's a, he's a part of it. He's, a, <clears throat> he's at first, I, I had a comp, somebody mentioned to me, what do you think about The Rock joining the MCU? And I said, keep him as far fucking away from the MCU as possible because whenever The Rock is involved in a franchise, he takes over and it becomes his shit. That's true. Fast and the Furious. He's not in that anymore, though, is he? He went in it, he destroyed it, and now he's out of it. And, I mean, they're still going, yeah. but he ends up taking it and getting his own fucking spinoff and shit. Hobbs and Shaw. Oh, yeah. that's right. You know what I mean? That's right. And, you know, I, I, he's... Don't get me wrong, man. I like The Rock just like anybody else. I just don't... I don't know if I'm so gung-ho about someone so headstrong with with creative power <clears throat> nah. but tom cruise was the suggestion there tc to go but those are his projects though he they don't bring tc in to something else and then yeah, he takes it's not, it over it's not common that tom cruise hops into something that's yeah. well established the rock will jump into your shit I don't know and then there's an his. example of it like it's over uh, yeah, the Mummy. The Mummy right. was a reboot, though. It wasn't really a pre-existing franchise in the way that the Fast and the Furious films were. Like the Mummy, like the idea was that the Brendan, the Brendan Fraser stuff didn't exist in the Mummy universe that Tom Cruise was kicking off. That was the start of something different. Like it wasn't like they were carrying. You mean on. the Brendan Fraser shit? That's what I'm saying. The Brendan okay. Fraser stuff wasn't feeding into the Tom Cruise. Isn't mummy, that where though. the isn't isn't that where Scorpion King came from though, right? Scorpion King, yes. Yes. I'm sorry, that's what he was he was referencing. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad, my bad. That's my bad. Yeah. Yeah. Of how the movie was supposed to go. Got you. Like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because it it was it was a reboot. It was mm. kind of a new. It was a new version of something something old. Well, so I'll give him that. But we very rarely see like he hasn't jumped into the MCU and said yeah. he doesn't. He hasn't jumped into James Bond or you know. I'm just shooting. I'm not just you know. He hasn't when he takes executive control of a project it's something that's so already kind of based around based around him being the 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 main the main character yeah whereas the rock it ain't got shit to do with him he's playing a a second lead comes in and then now he gets a whole movie off of his second lead by himself he comes yeah. into the mummy he's got scorpion king comes into fast and the furious he's got fucking hobbs and shaw Comes into DC, I don't know what the fuck ever. And now he's got Black Adam. Now we got to deal with Black Adam for the next ten years. And shit. Yeah, 
Well, <laughs> all right. Which so that, isn't, you know, people like him. It isn't bad. Well, whatever. Yeah. Back to the core question here real quick, which was our boy, Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. Leaving. Leaving. The Witcher. The Witcher. You're you're good with this. We're going to go back to Black Adam in one second, but you're good with that. No, I no won't say, follow-ups on I'll, it. I will say this. I didn't really right? get your take on it. I don't think we- you're going to. I'm, I, You're not a big Witcher fan, though. Not that, to cut nah, you nah, off. Nah. I, but, that, this is that's is, this is exactly what's going on. I'm not a big Witcher fan. Yeah. However, I think for him to be a big Witcher fan, and him to kind of give it legs. Yeah. And then now to kind of just be like, peace out the because band. it's not really going your way, and your your ex your ex call. Yeah. It says come back home. I think it's kind of a jerk move. I I would personally kind of see it through. Find yeah. out, figure it out, like figure it out. It, yeah. Well, make this your last season. Like, say, like this is my last season, and then do it. It is his last season. Season three is his last season. And then, he's okay. Gone. So he didn't. So okay. So correct me if I'm wrong. He's not quitting. He's just not coming back. Or did he quit? He's he quit. What's the difference? I mean, what's the difference? Yeah. So like when season three's over, Henry Cavill's gonna walk off the screen, and then when season four starts, Liam Hemsworth's gonna walk on. So that my impression was And nobody's gonna act like anything happened. Okay, my impression was he's like in in he has a contract to do this through season whatever. And he's yeah. just like, nah, I'm doing season three and I'm done. My guess is that the contract was probably is probably season to season. I don't think he was committed okay. to anything long term necessarily, but I think to Isaiah's point, the show is most likely if Henry was going to stick around would probably last this kind of go as long as time. he would stay. Yeah. There's a lot of book material. There's a lot of video game material. This show is could have been man. around for a long time, and it is a relatively successful show. I think for Netflix. So, yeah, I mean, I watched. What I did, you know, I, it wasn't for me. Yeah. But I see why it, it's it's liked, why it's yeah. well liked. I thought it was getting better with, I thought season two was significantly better than one and I was looking forward to season three, but I don't, I can't say that Liam Hemsworth brings the same type of charisma to the screen perhaps as maybe mm-hmm. Henry does. But anyway, um, we're going to get to Black Adam because it's on your watch list because you watch yeah, it. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. Yeah, yeah. we're going to get to that. But he's... Not Black Adam. I mean, I, it, it, it's Henry Cavill, though. You want to stay there? Yeah, we can stay on Henry Cavill. It's the James Bond. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. just keep going with Henry Cavill. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> do you want to talk about Black Adam, or do you want to talk about? I don't want to. I, I, I. Okay, I'll finish the the Black Adam. This part of the Black Adam piece with Henry yeah, Cavill. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, because he, you know, he's in. He is in. Uh, Black Adam, and I feel like. I just don't feel like. I'm not a quitter, okay? So I, I just I kind of have personal feelings about even if I don't watch The Witcher, I wouldn't quit on the on the fans. You know what I mean? Yeah, to go I get do you. this. And I feel like this is very kind of seems like you could figure out how to make both work. Exactly. That's that's where I'm trying to get. You can you can find a way to make make both of these happen. Yeah. You're you're fucking Superman I mean, Henry unless, Cavill. Unless it was contingent on things. Like yeah. unless un- I mean I could see it. I could see DC being like, "Hey, we, if you if we're going to do this cuz they were very reluctant I think to bring him back. I could see them being like, "Okay, if we're going to do the you're Superman all thing, in. you we've got to go. How Otherwise, much? we're bailing and we're going to somebody else because we've got to we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. So if, you know, season 4 of the Witcher, the Witcher is already money. scheduled, yeah. which it probably is because season three is already wrapped. Yeah. And they're in post on that. So if they're so give it six months and they'll go right back to filming yeah, and shit. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm sure, I'm sure DC was like, you either or you're in or you're out. How much for you to quit a, shot or move on? a show you're a lead on to go back to a studio to play a tumultuous character you've been having trouble I'm with? I'm sticking with the show. Really? I, me, think, I think so. me too, man. I'm I think with I would. The show. I don't. Find a new Superman. Like, I'm done. Like, There's I got- a few things. I think, A, I think shows are probably a lot more work and effort, probably in comparison to the pay. So there's that piece to it. Like, I don't I don't know what you value more. Um, like, the one, do you want to take that risk and devote, like, time and energy into a movie that could be big, like, a could huge be, success yeah. or not? Whereas, like, The Witcher is already established. There's already a fan base for it. 
it might not be as big as Superman, but and the yeah. and the checks aren't going to be as big, and there's maybe a little bit more work. But like I get it, you got to keep the lights on, right? Like Superman was on ice, and you feel you get you got to do something. And if you're going to do something, you got to do something you love. I yeah. guess that my hang up is you don't quit on the people who gave you a chance. You I know? don't trust DC Fuck at this no. stage in the game. No. I also don't think that, and I don't mean to like shit on Superman. I don't think Superman's that compelling of a character. If I'm being honest, he doesn't do it for me. So whether he's happy or funny or sc scary and dark, I don't, <laughs> I don't think it's going to matter. I just, I don't think you're going to pitch me on a Superman movie that I'm going to ever fall in love with. I just don't, I don't like the character doesn't resonate with me at all. Like a Batman yeah. does or something. So well, you're kind of a dark guy. So I don't know. I, I, I'm sure Henry will have a good, great time with it, but I don't think it's ever going to be like career defining. I think man of steel was like a good shot. Didn't quite, pan out then you had the Snyderverse thing didn't quite pan out I know that you've got some good guys now lined up at DC with you know gun and whatnot hopefully that brings a lot back to the table uh, maybe I don't know we'll but see. I like what Netflix is doing for the most part even on like the creative front like I think that once you get well established in the Netflix like universe you can kind of like spread out and do Ooh, other yeah. creative projects and I think that they're more willing to yeah like I, it just seems like that's a that's the place where I would want to be. For, and there's for a lot sure. of filmmakers and a lot of actors and actresses who that have, have signed deals to continuously yeah, work with who've Netflix. kind of like locked into the Netflix universe and that's like where they live. Like we David Fincher is a good example. Like Kevin Hart. Yeah, there's just plenty of people. Just, Mike Flanagan. Yeah, like there Mike are Flan people yeah. that are like, this is I'm gonna make this like my home, and that's probably what I would have done. But. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Uh, 007. So it came out, Henry was, you know, he's been in the news a lot. Uh, he said that it basically came down to him and uh, Daniel Craig for James Bond. And I obviously that. Craig got picked. So I thought that was an interesting little Henry's a, Henry is American, right? No. He's not? He got, a, he got an accent? Yeah, he does for sure. For sure. Heavy one? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. does. I remember his TikTok, his little video and shit. Okay. But if you had to go back, mm -hmm. Casino Royale, between the two of them, who do you pick? Do you stick with Daniel Craig yeah. or do you go Henry? I think the realism that Daniel Craig brings of, uh, uh, he brings a, a, a an edge mm -hmm. to James Bond, right? He's not the, he's not the continuous archetype of, slick yeah. back hair yeah. and you know he kind of he's he is a James Bond that's trying to fit the mold of James Bond yeah. versus these guys kind of just being the suave there's a humanity to Daniel yeah, Craig yeah, 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 yeah. that was not common right. I don't think in the role like he was kind of a character that I felt was more relatable to even like when I see any if I watch anything that Henry Cavill is in he just seems like he's just like an alien to me. <laughs> like what? he's just too over the top. He's too okay. over the top. Oh, okay. okay. He's like, yeah. He's too tall. He's too chiseled. He's too he's perfect. He's too like fucking a man. jacked. He's like jacked. He's got, he looks, whatever he does. He's got to he be can, Superman because yeah. he can't be anything. He can look else. clean yeah. cut. He can look roughed up. Say what? Like, he's like just, having like traps and shoulders that fucking big. Yeah. You can't do any regular movies. You, yeah. It's got to be action. It's got to be. He's like a real specimen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. You did you ever see the videos of his workouts for Superman for Man of Steel? No. Fucking insane, bro. No, I saw some for uh, Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Yeah, he got in crazy shape too. For no, me. he's a he. He kind of soft looking. Well, he's an alcoholic, so yeah. he's only gonna have so much. Edge. Yeah, no, I saw some of the <laughs> some of the Thor workouts. I don't think. Oh, Batman Hemsworth. Happened. Yeah, yeah, he's fucking retarded. I how mean, jacked is scratch how, that out. <laughs> how, <laughs> take how, it out post. Yeah. How jacked can yeah. Ben Affleck be? Yo, I, he got he got pretty big for, but again, he he, start, he got back man. with J Lo and started drinking again. Yeah. All right, Josh. Well, here's here's one more. Can I just Let's throw my dive opinion in, dude. here on this? Get into this. One other quick thing is that factoring his age, so he would have only been 20 when Casino Royale was released. You're a James Bond guy. I right? am. Yeah, yeah. I was yes. going to say, I felt like I had heard That's it. why I don't feel like this is true. 20, uh, 20 years old? Yeah. 
He was born in 86. So yeah, he would have only been 20 or may, maybe not even depending on, it was released later in the year. So yeah, he probably would have been 20. Because it was like 20, but 2004, right? Six. Six. He'd been a young buck. Would have been, yeah, right. I mean, Hollywood. Even and, and so my comparison here was going to be Taron Edgerton in Kingsman. He Very looks young. really young, yeah. but he was 25 in the first Kingsman movie. young face, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I don't think it would have been anywhere near as successful if no. it had been. No, I agree. I agree. But extremely mature situations that you wouldn't. That's expect. true. Like playing poker isn't a. Not a and at a high stakes poker 20, game. You're not doing yeah, that. you're not doing that. Most likely. You don't I, even I look don't the know. part. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just doesn't look yeah. believable. It was a little bit more of a, yeah, it was a more refined and interesting take on uh, the old James Bond. Right. And there's no it. way he would have retired, gotten married. Yeah. You know, at, at that age. Yeah, look yeah, at that yeah, age, right. you know? Yeah. Yeah. This is all there true. Go. Yep. This is all true. Very good. You gotta have, you gotta have a one, gotta have one person in every wheelhouse. Yeah. Josh is a Bond wheelhouse. Yeah. Here we go. All right. What's next? You tell us. We ready to move on? I think yeah, so. Yeah. All right, I think great. We're good to go. Oh, you want to talk about this? Oh, good call. Thank yeah, you. we can talk about this. You guys like it? Did I do good? This I week? do. This might mm-hmm. be a this might be a highlight for me. For real? Yeah, I think so. It's very good. What's the price point on this? Fifty. Okay. And that's the this is the so that, the regular like the regular yeah the the single barrel bourbon is I think sixty five. And then the single barrel rye is like fifty five, but you know, yeah, this is very, very good uh, for a bourbon. It's very nice. Well, it's yeah. like all of the things that you really want. Josh, watch this. Well, you keep it. Happy birthday! Oh, dude, you're so sweet. <laughs> you're so sweet, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. I said it. I said it, man. When I had it, I was like, "Yo, it's just like one of those things. It's like you, you, you know, you're out, and you're just like, yeah, light bulb, like, oh my god, yeah, yeah we got it, we got to have this. It tastes great, right up on the front end, and then it's just like, it's very warm, very smooth on the way out. Like, there's no, there's no bite to it. There's no getting used to it. Yeah. There's no. Let me get a glass in. I just give you a new staple. It's very nice. It's very nice. I would certainly revisit. And it's like a nice traditional bourbon for this. First time we've had it, but we've had 100 proof. It's 100 proof? Yeah. Nice. I should have got two. I should take get one to take home. Yeah, that's worth having. I've tried to like stop drinking until, I, we talk about this all the time. I try to like stop doing like hard liquor until we do the show. Yeah. Good, good uh, qualifier there. Yeah. That was it's quite tough, a mind though. fuck last week when yeah, you told us you stopped I was like, drinking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, all I had was all I had was six Bud Lights and a few white calls, <laughs> yes. and I just I didn't have anything today. And a bottle of wine last night, but you know, oh, I'm gonna drink some wine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love the people that are like you, Me. who are like, I'm done drinking. I'm not drinking during the week. And then there's like a asterisk at the bottom, and they're like, I'm oh, done by drinking the way. hard liquor right. during the week. Yeah, anything over anything over eighty proof right. uh, is, is, that's is where, drinking. That's the line. Yeah, but I'm gonna drink a beer. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a kill. I'm gonna kill some wine. I'm gonna pitch that to my wife. I'm no longer drinking during the week. Aside from <laughs> beer and wine, yeah, and anything that can't really be classified as hard liquor. <laughs> so we can put Fireball in there. My There's God. all kinds of things that technically we can. Yeah, we liqueurs. Can, it's a lot of things that can really slide on some the radar. Baileys in our coffee. <laughs> Easy, dude. There you go. Easy. Kahlua? Kahlua? No oh. problem. <laughs> Get some mudslides going. No problem. <laughs> some white Russians. Yeah, exactly. Just eat some cinnamon toast crunch in a white Russian. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, sober October is going to be very different next year. That's all I know. Oh, man. <laughs> <sighs> right. Next piece. Okay. Moving on. Uh, Avatar. Oh, oh, the I, trailer. Yeah. You just watched it. I this. watched it before we got started. God uh, damn it. I, I still don't know what's going on. <laughs> There's other Avatar people and they're like green. They're kind of like a greenish. Yeah, they're not. They live in the water. Not quite blue. Is it the algae? I was just going <laughs> to say that. All of a sudden. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. They, they're a little yeah, tan. Right. 
But he, they, one they of always them, know where North is. <laughs> one of them. I don't know what it's the saying. <laughs> Whatever. One of them had a little tattoo. Yeah. I don't know, man. I just, I'm not, I'm not convinced. The full trailer came out today, which is yeah. what we're talking about. And the full trailer in my opinion, really reveals very little about the story, which generally the full trailer, the concept is you're going to get enough about what the movie is going to right. be about. It would maybe interest you one way or the other. This felt like a very long teaser. Because it comes out next month, right? <gasps> December 16th. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we got to get a, we got to get some story. Well, this is it. I think this is, you might get one more trailer, maybe a rehash of the one that you just got. But I think James Cameron is playing up just the idea that People are going to go see this regardless. All right. The visuals are going to be insane. Uh, you know, it's everybody loved it last time. Like, you know what you're signing up for, more or less. The story is not as relevant. To be fair, that's kind of what the pitch was for the first one. And it kind of worked out. Like, the story wasn't all that great. It wasn't like it, it was, was the visuals and the... Yeah. It was, you've never seen anything like this before. Um, it's, you know, 3D is there was all of these aspects to it that were just kind of mind blowing, but nothing about the trailer in, like suggests that I'm not going to have a similar experience. Like, I feel like it's going to be, you know, blue people running around again. Yes. More on an on Island with like, you know, weird looking animals more or less. I didn't, but I didn't look like it was any better or no. worse. Like it um, wasn't like a, a leap in. If you played or, Avatar one trailer, and then played the Avatar 2 trailer, I would think it was just one you, movie. You think they were know. made a few years apart? Yeah, I don't, it, it, nothing looks apart. different. Two uh, years it, apart. It looks. To be over a decade down the road, eh, mm. I don't know. I'm not sold, man. I don't I'm not know. Convinced. But he's not, apparently, he did not, he's not like fully signed on to direct like the next couple. Thank God. He's only on for like two and I think maybe three, but four and five, he's like TBD on. I think it's because he's getting he's, up there too. Well, I think he knows that if this doesn't play out, he doesn't want to be associated. It's so stupid. I bet you this doesn't do as well at the theaters. I don't think it is, man. I'm so my question to you guys is what do you think will make this stand out? What's gonna what's gonna make over the top? Yeah, because 3D. I think that's what they're relying on. It's the first three D movie after the pandemic. Yeah. <sighs> It's really tough. I think if the pandemic had not happened and we had not dealt with the whole COVID situation, I think I think James Cameron would be in a much better position. Mm. I think most movie theaters have really suffered just in terms of experience in quality and technology. I don't think any of those things have really kept up over the last four to five years. And... I think most people have, I think their mindset around theaters has significantly changed. I don't, th like, I don't, I don't think about going to the movies that often. No. Uh, it's exceptionally rare that I get like excited, uh, excited or even investigate going to the theater. I mean, and when I do, you know, it's not the experience isn't very good. No. It's just not, it's not what you were used to or accustomed to or what you expected. Like, it, it, it's just all declined so rapidly. And I don't think throwing Avatar in the theaters is going to change any of those things. Like the Cinemark in Towson isn't any better equipped. It's not like they're all of a sudden Avatar is going to come back and they're going to start paying attention to, no. you know, the experience or the food or cleaning the theaters or like even calibrating the screens or the audio or whatever. Like things are um, like, it's miserable. The one like, we have talked about this many times. I went to, many times. I went to see the Northman, and they didn't even have the aspect ratio on the screen right. So none of the none of the none of the text subtitles, the subtitles yeah. was all yeah. uh, wasn't on the screen. So I missed a third of the movie. I didn't even know what the hell they were they're saying. They're trying to create a. Well, we say I've said it before. They want this gourmet experience with like McDonald's employees. Like it's just yeah. not gonna. There are some places where you can have a top tier experience and probably enjoy Avatar as it was intended to be experienced, right? Like, like it exists, but that like it's that spec is just narrowing so much. Like there's so few theaters now that are doing that. Or catering specifically yeah. to. So I think that that's been lost a little bit. And I don't yeah. know if that's coming back. I don't and think you're going to get it in Maryland. Maybe New York. Maybe he could Maybe bring LA. It. Maybe he could bring it. I remember when Avatar first was coming out, there was like a huge push to get 3D in all these theaters. And 
so many theaters like retrofitted and did all kinds of crazy stuff, upgraded all this technology, did all these things to, you know, provide this amazing experience. And I remember it being pretty remarkable. I saw Avatar a few times when it was like I think I did too. Because I thought it was pretty, it pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Yeah, you know, I think it was the first of its kind. Yeah. I feel like we were stepping into a piece of the future. You know, 3D movie, fucking goofy glasses, yep. whatever. But yep. it was still fun. You know, it was still fun to be a kid and like do that. Yeah. As a grown man, I don't think that that's fun anymore. I don't, don't give me accessories sure. <laughs> to go to the movies. This, this kind of, I, we've talked about it a, a few times, uh, I think, over the past few months. It, it comes down to, I think, what's the next thing? Like, what, what is the next evolution of the uh-huh. theater? Because right now, I think we've, we all agree that, Streaming is a is a much bigger thing now. I mean, than it was, and it's continuing to yeah. go. So, do we see theaters just continue to decline, or do we see them making some sort of big radical change and coming back? You, I made the joke many episodes ago about you know like the DJ and the smoke machine, <laughs> but I in in vain of that, I do think. The theater should now turn into more of a special experience, yeah. Rather than just we got the movie up, come see it. You know, like it. There, there, I don't know what elements you introduce. I don't know how to. Maybe you do pay the employees more to provide a better red carpet experience. Like invest in the marketing. Maybe maybe dress it up for its avatar, right? So. Bring your children. You get a you know may I, you get a discount ticket on seeing the first one before you go see the second one next week. Like I don't I don't know, yeah. but there need there needs to be more of an experience for theaters to survive. It's so, very tough, I think, because theaters are really reliant on blockbuster movies, and those yeah. are not very common. No. They're very rare, especially nowadays with streaming. There's way too much content. If you go back 20 years, 15 years, the only way you saw anything was if you go to the theater. So you were forced to, right? So did you like go see everything? Did you everything go funneled see in. Some, this yet? Yeah. No, so now it. it's unless a maverick happens or something, it's very rare that a theater is just going to be like maxed out to capacity. So you have to find a way to entice people to come in for something maybe that's not even specific to a movie necessarily. So there is a um, there's a new theater chain in started in Maryland, interestingly enough. I think it's called Warehouse Cinema maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can look this Where's up. Where is that? Um, they're getting ready to oh, – okay, so you know where the Cine Bistro was in the Rotunda? Yeah. So they bought that and they're going to be rehabbing that. Warehouse. But there's a few others. I think there's one in like Frederick. They're kind of further out. There's not any that are like local to – Baltimore or Towson or anything like that, but they have an interesting concept. Which I they, was about to say, what's they thing? have? They have great. It looks like they have great food, good drinks. Like they have a like it's a whole like they focus on beer a lot. So as far as I can tell, like they have like you get like a little like card maybe, or you can like go get your like. There's a whole bunch of taps, and you can go get your own beer. Like you can try a bunch of different ones, and you can eat right. food and do a whole experience. Like you could go there and do stuff. But maybe not even see a movie. Oh, and then, okay. I see what you're saying. They also, um, I've never been to one, so I can't. There speak are to the only specifics. two. Yeah, there's not. Me- yeah, there's not. There's only two. But it's an interesting concept, and they also have a new. Uh, I think it's like they even have like a patent on it. Maybe there's like a new screen technology or something. It's it's more the positioning of it, not like the screen itself. But it's like when you sit in the seat. I think the screen is, instead of it being like totally in front of you, I think it's like slanted a little bit. Oh. So I think like instead of having stadium seating, everybody kind of sits back on an angle a little bit and, and like it kind of a little. So rather than like being like stacked, everybody kind of just is like slanted. So you're kind of looking up on an angle. Josh can confirm this. They look, it looks like they have some different like concept for how That's pretty the cool. theater is actually designed and the layout of it is actually a little bit different. That's pretty dope. Um, but they've got like a social media thing and a little bit of a presence, and it seems like they've got something going on there that's kind of interesting. But yeah, I, I think you're gonna have to find a way to bring people in for like if I knew I could go somewhere and get a decent meal and get some good beers or do something that was fun, 
maybe like, I, you know, maybe there's a cool movie I want to go see. Maybe I'm not like in love with like the movie. Like, yeah. maybe, maybe it's just like a byproduct of the location or what I'm doing. Call me, call I, me I crazy, know. but maybe the net, maybe theaters need, theaters need to uh, kind of transition into more of an entertainment space like this, this warehouse mm -hmm. and not just be a theater. Like now we can come and see a concert. See, yeah. we can see a stand-up comedian. We can have beers and whatever yeah. and whatever. And then and then on this night, we're going to be showing, you know, on these nights, Tuesday, yeah. Friday, Saturday, we're showing the Batman for sure. the premiere. For the two weeks, we'll have it. And then whatever the next movie is, we'll have this. Yeah. One specific movie in two or three of our theaters or whatever. I, I don't know. You know what's man. another thing I think they should bring back? Um, they were doing this a lot during the pandemic, but they don't do it anymore. But you could rent a theater for pretty yeah. cheap and you could play like a lot of movies. Like there was a bunch of options. We you talked about doing that for your birthday. Yeah, like, when you, the could, pandemic you could started. spend like a hundred, it was like a hundred bucks and you could get a theater, you could bring like 25 friends. There was a limit. But, and then you could pick from a whole library of movies. No, you just get that fucked up and just watch sounds, movies and shit kind of cool to Fuck me yeah. kind of fun and i, I feel do. like they should reserve a couple of screens for that and promote that a little bit you could even bring a gaming console like if you want yeah, to play I've xbox or ps5 yeah. or something you could they would plug it in for you and you could play like there are things like that that i find interesting there's ways they got a cool you could watch and, the fight you know what i mean like we want to go watch the fight we want to go watch wrestlemania the finals the fucking or, super bowl why like, not there's and, gotta be. Oh man, I bet you there's whole kinds of legal issues with this. But like, why not do like football games? Yeah. I, like, I why just, not go to it's Cinemark? It's a gold mine. Why not go to Cinemark watch an NFL game? Yep. On Sunday, we're gonna watch the Ravens. Whole bunch of friends. AMC? Like, yeah, bro, come on. Whole yeah. bunch of people all rooting for the Ravens or a team or whatever. When we were in Vegas, here wings. We went to watch easy, the Ravens easy, game dude. at this at this hotel. You remember the name? Uh, it was the. He'll he'll remember. He'll remember, he'll remember. He's got like photographic memories. Um, but he's just the, gotta develop. <laughs> he's just gotta develop. <laughs> there it is. Way there it around. Is. <laughs> there it is. But the game was on a large fucking movie screen. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and it had like the stadium seating with the tables in front of us, and we were like eating yeah. and drinking and shit. Like, why like it just makes sense to do like you have these live events. Hey, come watch the Ravens game at the theater. Yeah. Or any game. We got all the games. There's got to be. Some you can hang out and watch Red Zone. Yeah. There's we got a whole be. bar out here. I'm sure know, they've man. thought of it. It seems like you couldn't have. Couldn't yeah, there's got to be some licensing. There's got to be some licensing. Some fuckery. What? But it seems like yeah. the NFL and a theater team would have gotten together and sorted this out by now. Anyway. All right. I spent a lot of time. A lot of time on that. I think that was a James Bond topic. That's so, correct. On, it just frustrates God us so much. <laughs> oh, it was Avatar. Yeah, that was that. That's uh, that's what got us. What we're trying to Avatar. Yeah. 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 So still, not, I'm personally yep. still not bought in on the whole Avatar uh, Avatar thing. Fucking James. Cameron. Yeah. TBD. I think it's gonna flop. That's my theory. Well, I gotta make their mon their money on it. They opened the whole world. I, you know? I have not talked to anybody that's like, oh, I can't wait. I'm gonna go see it. Bring a mini Pandora world to the theater for the kids. I just like, can't. I don't think it's happening. All right, carry on. All right. Uh, 28 months later. Oh, 28 months later. I was kind of excited about this. Did you ever see 28 Days Later? Yes. 28 yeah. weeks later. And now this is the third one, 28 months. 28 months Gosh, later. parents and their child's ages, just say two and a half years. I like didn't at that do that point, shit. 28 yeah. months, two, two and a half years. Two. Fuck the two fucking oh, years. Oh, wait. Well, kidding, right. guys. We can ask you because you have kids. I never did that shit. <clears throat> I don't. How did you track your kids' ages? I still am. <laughs> no, but like, do you count them by months? No. Nah. No. No, but well, like, at what point yeah, in the when, in when the, did you stop after the first stop? year? So you're gonna like, oh, they're eleven months. No, uh, she'll be one. That's what that was my like. Because some people are like, oh yeah, they're twenty seven months. What are you? Yes, these people exist. Yes, parents they do. Can't, parents oh, they count have... up to like thirty six. I feel stop like it. I've heard like thirty four months. They're two. The three? What's the like reason? Just fucking, the kid can walk and talk. They want to like doing... lean into the fact that it's like an infant or it was a child. Like they don't want to let go of the fact that it was a baby. Maybe I personally think like, and you know, I don't want to offend anybody, but no, I think like, them. <laughs> no, do it. <laughs> I think parents who do that are kind of dealing with kind of the helicopter parent syndrome and don't want their kids to kind of grow up and detach and kind of be their own person. Like after my kid turned one, I'm like oh she's one, like but. 
I'm not doing the math. You're like, one. You're on your own. You're That's on it. no more That's social it. posts. You Fuck figure out. it out from here. Yeah, like you're one. Um, Get yeah. your own Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> you run your own shit. Don't if post, you can't count up to thirteen to, to figure out what fake birthday to put in, I can't good, help you. Good luck on the capture, you fucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all on you now. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, I'm not gonna say those people are idiots. I just think it's I think it's corny. Okay, so you stopped though at a year. Yeah, my, my yeah, me and my wife are just they're one fucking one. It's a baby. One year. You old. should be able as one an adult year. to decipher if this is a baby or a toddler. Like, oh, what are they? Like two or three? And I say, yeah, they're two or they're three. Don't fucking give me oh, nineteen months, thirty-two months. <laughs> Punch you in your fucking eye. Get <laughs> out of here. Oh. Nine, ten months. <laughs> oh, eleven and a half months. So they're one. <laughs> like they're almost there. There we go. Yeah, I didn't, do, I didn't do that shit. And 28 months later, here we are. <laughs> All right. And we're, and 28 we're months later. Yeah. I feel like this is a little bit of a deep I love, cut, though. I love zombie shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, you were into those? Yeah. I feel like it's been forever. I don't know. When did 28 days later? Or 28 Long weeks time later ago. Come out? Uh, 28 days, 28 weeks. 28 weeks one. was 2007. Yeah, Good. long ass time ago. Arrive. And days was 2002. Yeah. Good. So Four. we're almost, what, 15? 28 years later. <laughs> oh, that's, there we go. We get uh, there. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm down. I'm down. I think Danny Boyle did the other ones. I think that was kind of. I think he was the one that kicked that off. So I'm excited is for it, it. Is I it theaters or streaming? It, it was always very. There's no information on that. It's no. very it's just early. In production, I think yeah. the script has been written. Maybe I think the script got wrapped up. So TBD as to what happens next. But I'm here for it. I am. Um, I you know, I was really really big. And this is, I'm going to speak about the zombie genre, if that's okay for a second. I was, I'm a really big fan of zombie shit. And I think that personally, The Walking Dead has kind of ruined the zombie genre. One, it's gone on entirely too long. But it's over now. It's, yeah, just, just fucking ended, right? Yeah. Season 13 or some shit like that. Yeah. And, you know, that story got long, very much convoluted and whatever. I followed it all the way up to like 10. And I was just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, but what it did was because it was it was so good and it was so like kind of like high quality, it was hard for uh studios to develop a organic zombie movie that wasn't in the vein or guise of that. Right. I think the only thing that we kind of got was like double tap and double tap two. Outside of that, not I said double tap. What, what was the movie? Zombie Land. Zombie Land. Yeah. And Zombie Land Two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there have been plenty of attempts. I feel like Netflix has a couple of they tried. zombie iterations. Yeah. Was it the um, same though? Yeah, they're they're out there. The Last of Us really dominated the space, though. Yeah, that's true. And then you have The Last of Us coming out in January. Yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll be, tap in for that. That'll be good. That'll be. I would suspect that'll definitely fill the gap. Of yeah, that's like high highly quality, yeah. highly anticipated zombie style. They're technically not zombies, but zombie style. Zombie like, style, yeah. Uh, you know, cinema, if you, if you will. Yeah. But I think the zombie thing is to your point. I mean, I th- I feel like TV shows are a better space for that rather okay. than movies. I would I would wager. I feel like the whole concept of it because if you look at um, what was it uh. World War Z, for example. Um, World War Z was... BP, Brad Pitt. That was a major motion picture, Brad Pitt. Yeah. Uh, there was actually a sequel on the on the books for a while. David Fincher was supposed to direct mm-hmm. that fell through. But World War Z was something that probably would have been better suited as a TV show. It's something that just requires more time. More storytelling, yeah. And not to go back into the whole movie Because it was a novel. Yeah. Conversation that we always have. But I think the reality of like TV shows kind of surpassing cinema is just, it's just where we're at as a society. Yeah. I think TV shows are a way better format. That's just my opinion. Like I think a 10 hour, like I think these opportunities to tell more story is just, it's better. Like I don't, you can't do Game of Thrones doesn't exist as a movie. No. House of Dragons no. doesn't exist as a movie. I think Stranger parts, Things doesn't exist as a movie. Parts of it could, if you want to explore like a side mission, yeah, we, but but no, but the main the main chunks of it need to be Stranger told. Stranger Things was Goonies. 
Yeah, it was. It, it was. It was the, it this generation. Was those, yeah, yeah, but now, but now you don't. Now all of that energy though is now going into these shows. It's not going into movies anymore. Why would it? I, Why did would I? It? Did I send? I didn't send y'all that tweet I saw about ET, right? No. Or I just posted on. I just posted. But it. you know that they're auctioning ET off. I'd love to buy him. I didn't add that to the news, but, <laughs> to the news doc. But they are auctioning off the original ET. You can buy him if you want to own him. With the animatronics in him and shit. I don't know what's going to be in it. Whether it'll work or not, I have no idea. But the original ET is going to be coming up for auction pretty soon. My favorite and, uh, part. And if you'd like to own him, you certainly can. I'm sure for a price. Favorite part in that movie uh, is when he's playing dress up with um, Drew Barrymore, and uh, is it is it Corey? What's the what's the kid's name? Is it is he, he's a savage, right? No, mm. can't remember. Mm -hmm. But he comes in and she he's like, "What are you doing?" And E.T. startles E.T. and he's like, "Ah, I like that was oh, I puts me in the floor every fucking time." But um, I posted, it was this tweet. It was like, yo, me and my friends that have found E.T., we would have murdered that fucker. Oh, no, I did see this. You did you did share this. We would have killed him with hammers. Like, you did share yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I, I kind of think back. Like, if me and my- You got some rage in you, man. No, what I'm just saying, like, if me and my friends at the time find a fucking alien, like, I'm not giving him the time of the day. To, like, you're just going to, if you come across an alien- I'm not. I'm not gonna try. You're gonna friends. kill gonna him take the right opportunity. Away. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, sir. Did, like ET's kind of cute though. No, the no, fuck he's not. No, he's not. He looks he's like a scrotum with cute. eyes. But like, not if he cute. tries to touch you with that glowy finger, you are gonna let him do it? Yeah. No, you're. Creepy. I think so. No, I think. Don't so. Don't let him touch. It's you. not like alien or signs, bro. They're he's an like, alien, though. No, I know he's an alien, but he's like a little. Like a shoebox with like a head, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, eats. I don't. I'm. First of all, I e. would be terrified if of I seen e. him. E. You go outside. You're and scared e. of ET. I'm not scared e. of ET, but if I walked outside and ET is like, I've never seen in anything that looks like ET before, and he's like sitting on a pit on a porch. No. God, alien must have haunted you. I mean, but that looks dangerous. Like, you know to stay away from that. Yeah, E.T. I, I like, think that's the problem. E.T. doesn't e. look dangerous. E.T., you don't know which way to go, so kill it anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm not giving, uh, capture it, it or something, yes. and then we call the authorities, yep. because I'm not. E.T. is like the koala bear of, like, aliens. He's just, the sloth. Yeah. <laughs> He's just, he can't even walk. And you That's what he walk? wants you to think. And yeah. He can't walk. We yeah, he won't walk. be able to after you murder <laughs> it. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> You know I can't much, believe you're just going to straight up just, you know. You know how much money I'm going to get when I donate gonna, that body to science? God, you're just going to murk out. He'd see if he walks up on you. Yeah. God. <laughs> Me and my proud boy gear when the news show up and I got this E.T. body. <laughs> you're going to look like the Trump brothers with that leopard. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be like, you killed what? <laughs> You sure that's not a little child? <laughs> You're like, I don't know, maybe it is. He tried, uh, <laughs> he tried to do that little wobbly run. I wasn't having it. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to get on my bike. I told him no. <laughs> yeah, bro. No, I'm not taking the chance. Uh, he's locked in the garage until somebody can get here. <laughs> well, locking someone in the garage and murdering them are two different things. No, the tweet, the guys, <laughs> they would have murdered him. I'm not giving, I'm not getting close to him. I'm not touching him. I'm not, I mean, I don't believe in just harming things, but like clearly it's an alien. I don't want to tell I'm not asking you to take him to bed. I'm just saying you put him in the garage for a little bit. I'm not giving him the time of day. Call the zoo or something. The zoo? Yeah, you want to give him, you give him the zoo, he's much worse off. Well, presumably at the time you don't realize he's, he's an alien. much worse off right? <laughs> like, than you, just you killing him? You don't walk up in a field, see this and go, that thing's not from here, right? Because there's got to be a lot that you just don't recognize. You know? I mean, I, yes. What kind of animal is this? <laughs> what is this that? is a very odd aardvark. <laughs> it's clearly not a possum. Yes. No. Maybe it is. I don't know. Evolution, my ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I'm not giving him. I, no, we. I would not murder him. No, I wouldn't murder E.T. But I'm not. We're not exploring this. We're we're staying in. We're we're calling animal control or. Men in Black or whoever we gotta fucking get to come get this guy out of here because 
He's just sitting on here stupid. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> no. You're just looking at him through the ring cam like, nah, dude. The cops no, are on their way. Bro. No, no. It's called know? Baltimore City Police. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll take care of it. Yes. They'll take care you of it. might want to get going. <laughs> Almost made an inappropriate joke. We'll do that. <laughs> you don't look like you're from around here, yeah. but you should You should leave now. Maybe you should get going, buddy. <laughs> Just looking for some Reese's Pieces. <laughs> God. Cops show up. <clears throat> it's a whole different situation. <laughs> Ah, God bless. Well, All right. Great. Next item before we get that's to it. off the rails. I had, that's, that's it. it. That's oh, it. We got it's watch list time. I, I had, had some jokes, them. man, but they're just not right for nope. this show. Mm -mm. You sure? Probably no. Oh, no, no, they're probably not. Man. I don't know what they are, but they're probably Oof. not. Oh. Dark oh, humor. <laughs> Offline jokes. No pun. Yep. <sighs> yep. All right. <laughs> Courtney, let's do your watch list. I had to switch my too. watch list up. Guys made me feel bad. Yeah, a little bit of pressure. A little, lot of, little bit of pressure. Let's run through it. Uh, what I got on there, Josh? Halloween oh. ends. That shit was trash. You watched it? Yeah. I told you not to. I had to. Because I told you not to? I, I don't know if it was like you told me not to, but it was also kind of implied. Like when you say, don't don't watch it, I watch it. Okay. And then I right. feel bad yeah, that I watched good. it. Yeah, it's not great. I'll, I'll, okay, I got some thoughts. Okay, so it was trying to be a love story. It was trying to be a love story, a slasher, and a kind of, uh, I guess, kind of a redemption arc. Like, so much stuff happened in it that would never have, like, that, yes, that's correct. that shouldn't happen in a Halloween movie. Like, they're trying to, like, rid the town of this curse of Michael Myers, so they treat him like a martyr. Mm -hmm. At the end, and like all of the people are like moving. I don't think they were treating him like a martyr. I think they were just all so happy that he was finally dead that they wanted to make it like a ceremonial, like, you know. Go home. Let the police handle this guy. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It really went off the rails. It just went very early so on. But if you're, if we're being, this is the part that we, I talked about this on a previous episode. I think it might have been last week. Um, a lot of those like classic slasher films really go off the rails after like one or two. Yeah, they have no movies. direction, and then it just yeah. becomes wild. Like the concepts just go super wild, and I felt like that's what they ultimately did with Halloween Ends. They really just went like absurd. They just like I felt like the first Halloween re like the Halloween reboot that they kind of did with her. No no, 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 with the one that David Gordon Green did with Jamie. Lee Halloween Curtis. Kills. There was Halloween Kills as the second, and then Halloween and Ends. But the first one. one was just called Halloween. Halloween. And it was fantastic. It was kind of like a rebirth, a little bit, kind of a reboot in a way. So again, we had some same. We had the care. We had you know the original characters, yeah. but it was like very well done, and it wasn't this absurd, crazy concept and then it basically was just like and then it just kind of went way off the road and then by the third one it was just completely absurd which is exactly what happens with friday the 13th uh you know nightmare on elm street all of those yeah by the time you get to the third one it makes no one, sense anymore you're just so far off there was jason in space by the time you it get to the end of it, right? something wild. like it just gets so ridiculous so yeah. i felt like they were kind of leaning into that idea of like let's just go back down that it was rabbit so hole of stupid absurd concepts and that's what happened you know like he's supposed to be this in almost semi-indestructible man inhuman uh, almost, yeah, yeah. Who can't be like, can't be killed. Like, yeah, he's barely got fingers on one on one hand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And this teenager just runs in and beats him up and steals the mask. I'm yeah, like, I don't. I didn't man. like the concept of him really being feeble or being like hiding. I didn't like any of that. He's a better like. It's more fun when he's a good representation yeah. of like fear and something that's just kind of constant. I yeah, don't like the yeah. idea of him being kind of do docile. Yeah, I mean. If it mean is he is he human or is he not? not like what yeah. are we doing? Like, they send him to jail. You pick so one or the other. He goes to jail. So is he human pick one or, or, the or? I don't. Yeah, is it he, just so much happened while I was watching it, and I just was like, I was like, I see why Taylor said don't watch this shit. Yeah, but I feel like I needed to. That's something to talk about. What's, what else? Next step. Next uh, step. Real quick, just on Jamie Lee Curtis here. I don't know if you guys are Reno nine one one people. Mm. Sometimes um, if so, it's on. Yeah. So they went through this phase where they Nash, went right? to Quibi, right? That. Sure. Where they went to Quibi, that that short-lived Jeffrey yeah. Katzenberg, you know, yeah. thing. 
And then Roku bought the rights. Right. And in episode two of the new season that came out in February, Jamie Lee Curtis features prominently. She comes in as an inspector from the neighboring oh, wow. Sparks Police mm-hmm. Department. You know, whatever. She's got an eye patch, you know, or you know, her boobs are prominently featured. Yeah. And she she she's in several scenes. You know, they cut different. Yeah. And she's in several scenes. And essentially she has sex with all of them. Oh under the guise God. of I need to do a department inspection. Oh God. And right right at the end of the episode, Jim, you know, Dangle, he's reading his thing and he's like, All right, we got a got an escaped uh mental patient. Uh very interesting. Here's a picture. It shows it's a picture, and it's, Jamie, and it's Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh shit! With okay. the eye patch on the other side, and they're the and they're they're kind of looking. and goes, nah, it can't be her. She had it on the right side. <laughs> and then the episode like heads. But I thought it was very weird that Jamie Lee Curtis came on this. You know, what is basically a shit TV show? Yeah, you know, dumb comedy and whatever. I love I love the the um what do you call that? The cameo. Yeah, the big yeah. star cameo. It yeah. is a good time. Um. Office did a lot of those, like Idris Elba, Will Ferrell. Right, 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 right. Uh, James Spader. J- yeah, yeah, James yeah, Spader. Yeah. They're there for like a season and then they, they're done. Yep. I, I love that shit. So, yeah. All right, next up on your watch list is Black Adam. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. All right, let's do some hot takes on Black Adam real quick. Did not enjoy it. Okay, there it is. Tell us more. Or less. It had, it had the elements to be what they said it was going to be. It was not executed properly. There was a lot of tropes in it that were what I would say are kind of corny to what you would say is now a grounded conceptional idea of comic book yeah. movies. Right? Mm-hmm. Like the 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 village the community people coming out to fight the zombies like mm-hmm. they don't do that stuff anymore you know what i mean the 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 young kid the, first of all this kid's like 17 years old mm-hmm. he's one of the main characters leading the revolution of the people in the in the in you know in the, like the in the third act it just wasn't you know it it had its moments i will say the action was very fast paced and it, it kept my attention. There weren't really many slow movements, but script wise, the jokes were very flat. Uh, one of the lead actors is um, the black guy from, uh, he plays Hawkman, but he was in The Invisible Man. Remember him, the cop? Yes. Yes, him. Josh, he's gonna pull his name up. I see. Working on it. Um, he just has like, a weird relationship with Pierce Brosnan who plays Dr. Fate. And apparently they're supposed to be like super close friends. And it sounds like you didn't like it. I did not like it at all. I did not. Okay. So on a one to 10, one being garbage, 10 being fantastic. I'll give it a five because I right up the middle. I'll, I will give it a five because, because of, the action was was very was very good. Okay. The action was amazing. Like they All really right. they really got that part of it. They really got the uh, none of it really looked corny. Yeah, <clears throat> the villain they still had a problem with like that full CGI, full CGI in the villain. Everyone always has a problem. Yeah, with the that didn't that didn't really look well. But um, and I don't know if. There's a copyright to like Marvel CGI versus DC CGI because they 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 just look different. Doesn't make sense. The DC world just looks different than the Marvel world. Yeah. It's DC world thing. is very like like all kinds of just weird shit happening all the time and and where uh, you just gotta see it, man. I, I can't really. I don't know how I am. I mean, maybe you when it's readily won't. available. Yeah. But that's um, kind of what I suspected. I thought that it was not going to be very good. I thought it was going to be a kind of a miss. The Rock is trying extra hard. That's what the hard. reviews were saying. And yeah. I feel like you co-signed that. So yeah. here we are. I see why it dropped. Yeah. What, what's no, it's not going to. It's going to bomb. I said this last week. Inside Man S1 episode two. So I started watching Inside Man with Stanley Tucci. Starts out corny. Score is kind of whack. 
But then this fucking shit just goes off the rails. Like, it's just... That good, eh? It, you, it's, it, it's not great, but the story is compelling, All okay? Right. Like, it, 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 it's, it's, I'm, I'm tuned in. I'm okay. dialed in. All I'm right, dialed in. All right, all right. Um, he, the premise is, he is a uh, criminology professor mm-hmm. who is arrested for killing his wife. And in the first two episodes, he kind of, they never say why he killed his wife. Yeah. But he's like, I had to kill her. And the cases that he takes. So basically people come to him to help solve cases while he's in jail. Kind of the um, silence on a lamb type thing, but he's sure. not dangerous. Sure, sure. He's in jail. Uh, uh, you know, it's TV. So it does have a lot of corny aspects. Like his yeah, ce- yeah. his yeah, cellmate true. is, you know, this big black guy who's arrested. They're on death row. Mm-hmm. Who's arrested. And they just kind of do like kind of very superficial tropes. And, you know, the joke is that he's like, he killed 14 women. The guard, the guard says, yeah, he killed 14 mm-hmm. women. And he's like, no, I only killed 13. And But he has a photographic memory. Yeah. So that's why... Stanley Tucci's character uh, is uh, has an affinity for him because he takes him into the room when he meets with people and has him kind of sit and uh, by memory record the entire conversations that they had so that then when they get back to their cells, they can discuss it. Um, that's a corny part of it, but the initial case that jumps off the... It's just a domino effect of things that happen. Mm-hmm. That's just very, very uh, good storytelling that I'm, I'm, I'm tapped into. I love that. So yeah, I mean, just you know, all right, something new to the I watch. Really like, I really like David Tennant. Also, him, yeah, yep. he was Kilgrave in Jessica Jones, The Purple Man. Yep. Oh, okay. I mean, just to, I just kind of, his character is a priest or vicar. Is that something? Mm-hmm. In yeah, in Church of England. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. he's a vicar. And <laughs> is that something? go on. There's a <laughs> there's a guy that works in the church for him, and he gives him. This guy is kind of like mentally. I'm not gonna say mentally ill, but he's in the he's he's on the last. He's interesting. He's on the other caboose. He's in the he's on the back of the caboose, like the one of the back last of the train. One. Yeah, he's okay. not the sharpest tool in the sure, and. Uh, he busts a few in, sandwiches short of a full picnic. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. <laughs> Lights are open. I'm trying to trying to get another one. I can't. I don't have one. Elevator. Yeah, <laughs> elevator. It doesn't go all the way to the top. Yeah. Floor, right? Jeez. Um. He's got um. Zetas. A problem, right? And he comes in. He gives uh David Tennant a flash drive, and he's like, "Please take it. Please take it. Mm-hmm. My mother is coming. She's gonna search all of my stuff." You have to take it and take it from me. Yeah. Right. So he takes it. He just like, he's a regular guy. So he takes it, puts it in his pocket. His mother comes. As soon as David Tennant leaves, she mm-hmm. ab- starts abusing this grown man. Damn. Right. And she's like, if it's anything like, she's like, just going in on him. Like, I know you're still watching that stuff. And he's like, you take it. It's my porn. It's porn. Right. On the flash drive. And me and my wife are watching this like in 2022, almost 23, you're still putting porn on a fucking flash drive. I'm like, this dude's an idiot. That's the, that's the. That's why he's an idiot. Right. No, that's the, that's the key. (laughs) Sure. uh, To the porn because it's child pornography. Got it. Oh God. Understood. Right. Okay. Well, now this episode. There we are. (laughs) Yeah, it really did. It gets crazy. So you see algorithm just. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Cancel us. <laughs> it gets nuts. It gets fucking nuts. But I'll leave it there. He ends up with the flash drive, and then I'll leave it there. It's yeah, just please crazy, do. You don't have to bro. tell us about the it's, whole show. You, we're just looking for your opinion of them. Nuts. Hot takes. I don't need you I just to like describe shit, it. I like shit that just goes off the rails. All like right. that. Well, let's that. What else Is there anything else on his watch list? Uh, yeah. So um, White Lotus. Started that. That's cool. We're let's looking see. for hot takes on White Lotus. It's. I don't it, need the whole storyline. It's uh, kind of in the guise of like... Um, but you like it. Yeah, I like it. Yes, no? Yeah. Watch it. Mm-hmm. You watch season one? I'm watching season one. But you've wa- you, Okay, so you're watching them mm-hmm. together. Yeah. Got a, one of the guys looks like a Franco brother. 
but I don't think it's him. All right. What else on the watch list? Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. <laughs> Still enjoying that. Yeah. God, I, love that. I assume. So much. Very good. What you got? All right. Let's go on to mine. All right. The Vow, season two. The Vow, season two. This is the uh, cult, cult scenario. Shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's good. Still worth watching. Uh, if you're into that whole thing, I recommend it. It's not super dark. It's not super uh, creepy or scary, any of those things. It's pretty mild as far as that stuff is concerned. But wow and factor. Is there like moments where wow you're like, factor? wow. Um, it's it's very interesting. If you like true crime or if you're into conspiracy, if you're into – like if you're a Tinder swindler kind of fan yeah, yeah, or yeah, something yeah. like that, this is right up your alley. Bad this vegan. isn't this isn't like horribly um, like dark or grotesque. I mean there are certainly – there are some like some sex crimes and some things like that <sighs> in it and conspiracy and whatnot. But it's not uh, – it's not a, the keepers or anything like that. Like you can you can certainly watch this. It's, it's, it's worth checking out. It's on HBO. It's well done, well produced, well made. First season. Mm-hmm. Uh, you I kind of want to watch that first and then get into the Vow season two. But carry on. Unsolved Mysteries season three. Uh, yeah, Unsolved Mysteries. Yeah, I watched on season Netflix. one and two. Uh, I've yeah. seen I've seen them all. This is a slower watch for me. Uh, I get to it when I've got, you know, gaps to fill. Mm-hmm. It's fine. It's okay. It's serviceable. Some of the stories lean a little bit more towards the like UFO kind of stuff. I, I'm season. not as into that, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a couple like UFO specific episodes, which is fine. Mm. But any any aliens getting murdered? I'm more here for the murder mystery than <laughs> any I am. Body for bag the ET. <laughs> like obviously UFO. Like UFOs are unsolved mysteries, like by default. I don't think we have to of make course. a show about it. Uh, Mind Hunter, see, uh, Mind rewatch. Hunter. Oh, rewatch. Mind rewatch. Hunter. Yeah, good I've been Ed working Kemper. my way through that. My God, what an incredible show! Really fantastic. It was really good. Such man. a good show. It's not canceled. Season three is yeah, still sweet. potentially like in the works. They said that it's indefinite, but um, that David Fincher said that he's not done with it and that it will come back at some point. But a really top notch show, <sighs> Just like executed so completely good, completely incredible, top yeah. down. Very, very good. We go from a great show to a shit show. Love is Blind season three. Love is Blind. Didn't God watch bless. the first one. Uh, Love I think is Blind. My wife forgot it. about it. He he mentioned it last week. Yeah. and I Love is Blind season it. three has been a little bit of a miss for me. Not as many interesting mm. characters. I've been working my way through it. I'm not I'm not anywhere near, near towards the end yet. Emily and I get through maybe an episode, you know, one or two a week. Um, the characters don't seem as compelling to me. Kind of some mm. odd choices. It's kind of I don't know if it's like a... I don't want to say bad casting, but it's just not as much drama as I'd like to have had yet. I'm I'm here for the, you know. Yeah, I feel like it was kind of a slow burn though in the second season too. For the savagery of it all. Know, who mm-hmm. knows? But all right, uh, on. right. Next one, uh, Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. Oh, Cabinet of Curiosities. This is on Netflix. All right, so this is uh, there's eight episodes in season one and they're all standalone little horror stories so every episode mm. is like its own little mini movie and they're about 50 minutes to an hour hour 10 somewhere in there um, how frightening on a scale very good very good some of them are very frightening mm. um like very scary and then some of them are more like creepy some of them are more like gory but i would say that there's a couple in there that'll hit you for sure all right. uh but Excellent. If you're into that kind of thing, for sure, a uh, worth watching. Um, I don't think it's like a whole like I don't think it's fun for the whole family necessarily, but it's definitely worth giving a pass. Emily and I really, really enjoyed it. Let my four year old watch. Yeah, it. yeah. Let him give it. <laughs> spin it up. Figure dude. it out. Spin it up. Uh, and then you got Big Mouth. Oh, Big Mouth season six. That's on. Um, we've talked about this. You're not a big Big Mouth fan. It was a miss for me. Uh, I, I don't know if the big humor mouth. just wasn't for me. Big fan. I, it was funny. Don't get me wrong. Big fan of Big Mouth. I just thought it was, I don't know. I don't know. It's not bad. Maybe it, it was just a miss for me. But Could I, have been. Yeah, it was just a miss. And then uh, well, uh, Wendell and Wild. Oh, yeah, Wendell that? and Wild. Okay, so this is the Key and Peel. Not that it is Key and Peel. It's just those two guys. Um, <laughs> key and Peel. It's not like a Key and Peel <laughs> thing, but the two of them, they there is a movie on Netflix that they did uh god what's his face the guy that did uh nightmare before christmas not tim burton the director henry selick henry selick it is his new film uh and the two of them are like producers on it they're in it as voice actors it's a stop motion oh, thing. oh. watched that last night uh, it's obviously a very like Halloween kind of vibe, dark, scary, creepy kind of stop motion thing. Got it. Um, 
the last movie I think he did was Coraline, if you saw that. Ah, okay. Uh, so you got to be into that kind of thing. I don't think the stop, it's it's on Netflix. It's a Netflix movie. I don't think the stop motion or the animation is as good as the Coraline. They did do some things that yeah, were Coraline a interesting. Like a big budget, yeah. They tried to like, I feel like they tried to cut some corners around the stop animation stuff to like try to be a little bit more interesting or unique or different. Right, but I right. think it was really more of a budgetary thing. And so there are some moments where you feel a little underwhelmed by the uh, visuals, I would say. And the story is fine. It's good. It's got like an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes, I think. So pretty pretty healthy score. Uh, it's a good Halloween kind of movie if you're into it. Okay. But it's not, I don't know if it's like, I mean, if you have some if you have some kids that are, you know, maybe on the older side, seven, eight, nine, something like that, maybe it's a pet, maybe it's a hit for them. I don't, if, you know. Okay. There's definitely like some death and stuff in there, so I don't know if it's like for death. The, it's, I don't know if it's for the young kids, but it's worth a watch. Yeah, worth a watch. Anything else on there? That's it, boys. God bless, dude. We did it. Here we go, brother. All right. New yeah. riff bourbon episode thirty eight. Uh, We're signing uh, off wait, on it. Let's see. Uh, let's let's real quick before we go. Let's go. Let's see what my mother in law DVR this week. <laughs> let's do it oh this is a fun segment yeah let's see what she got files tv you boys just kind of chop it up while i pull this up i don't know i got it my stuff i'm not chopping anything up dvr could run out of tape though she's gonna say something up yeah super eight prices have skyrocketed i heard that's right oh so she's this week it was uh dr pimple popper she didn't she didn't do anything crazy not anything crazy specific that you could just you could just stream so she's doing good she did good this week very good yeah all right episode 38 we'll check back next week bless <laughs>